you are dealing with all these 37,000 churches around the world, one Bible, one devil, one Jesus. They can't just seem to agree on anything. So the Anglican being a British church, which influences both Swaziland and Kozulu, Kozulu monarchs, because of the Anglican royalties and etc. So basically you find that your religiosity is based also on your political dominant culture. But Zimbabwe, the missionaries that came through in the 1800s started off in Kimberley. Actually, the mine in Kimberley for diamonds belonged to an Adventist who sold it to them to the DBS. That is the literal history. And um, then they did the great migration into Solusi, where they asked for land and they built up the school, Solusi Mission. So it became an educational institution, which now politicians and like those who wanted to learn and study came in. So together with the Catholics, so what they did in Zimbabwe, which was quite unique, is that the, the regime of colonialism kind of cut the country into pieces. The Lingua and Berengua area, the Lemba area, it was for the Lutherans. Then Serima, Gokomeria, and other places was for the Catholics. Then Solusi, Bulueo was like for Adventists, and with patches, of course, like Loaguelo and Hanki and etc. So you find that if you walk into a space, there's a dominant church, which that's how they did, trying to keep them away from each other. But fortunate enough, on the, on the Adventist side, they managed to get quite a good influence in terms of the quality of education. Andrews University, which is the mother school, sent quite a good, good educational outfit. I went through that, that institution myself, my father having worked for the Seventh Adventist Church. So I did from high school, right up into university. And um, so education was one thing. And then the health message on the other side became another advantage again. And they produced this fine quality of teachers and ministers. And uh, of course, teaching was the more, one of the biggest quali mm -hmm. uh, qualifications that any black, when your child was educated, there must be a teacher, <laughs> a policeman or a nurse. In terms, of, in terms of the influence of the Adventism, and again, the best of Adventism or the ballooning of Adventism happened after the struggle, which I, I want to attribute that to the eschatological message. Here is a people coming out from war. He is us coming out from war. We had lost everything that we had. Farms had been burned down, cattle had been, relatives had, had been killed, and the environment was just toxic for life. The trauma was, he, we, some of us are still, you, you talk about it, I still hear some quake in my stomach, and, and I could still hear the, 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 the noises of war. So at the end, in 1980, when independence came through, people had lost faith in life itself. So I think Adventism brings with it this euphoria, this utopia of there's a better land somewhere else. We don't have to worry about this world, guys. There's, there's heaven somewhere there. And then someone who has gone there is coming back to take us home. So I think the message echoed quite deeply with the people in despair, the people broken down, people looking for something that they could hold on to. And it became very lucrative because then People did not need to cry over what they had lost. There was a new breeze of hope, which was eschatological, out there, the parousia. Whereas in you in Swaziland with the Anglican space, the religion gave you access into what we're doing here, the queen is also doing. So it aligned your royalty with what the British monarch is doing. And Sobosa himself and uh, our honorable King Makositive being actually you know, well aligned with, with, with that royal house. So religion, speaks to politics. Religion tries to solve the problems that politics is not solving. So it is a center which sells hope in times of hopelessness and it is a pity when it becomes an opium and a drug that subtracts you from local involvement for future participation. Islam is based on the same principle. It doesn't matter what happens now. If you die, you end up in paradise. And the extremes of that, then there are those who want to go there faster. So I don't have to wait to leave. No, and I'm not saying all Muslims think like that, but within every denomination, if you become too fundamental in this kind of theology, you end up pulling the thing to the extreme end. So you find people like uh, the Jehovah's Witness and the, the Latter Day Saints, they're actually branches of the Seventh Adventist Church. And even guys like David Koresh, that guy who was trying to reproduce 144,000, and he said he was the only one who was going to make children and got young girls and said a pregnant American government bombed him and killed him. All those people. You can Google him. David Koresh. So he was an extreme Adventist. But when you create this theology of remnant, 
144,000. The Jehovah's Witnesses said, we are the only ones who are going to go to heaven. All of you are going to go openly. We and our children. So this theology of exclusivity. exclusivity. You're the remnant. You're the chosen. You're what, what. Keep on pushing hard on that thing. You end up actually cultic on the, on the extreme end. But, uh, and I think the Anglican Church in your space, Swaziland, it became acceptable because of their tolerance also of cultural norms. So on another day we shall discuss what is better, a traditional in Pepo or an Anglican in Pepo. At the end of the day, we are all choking from smoke. I mean, imagine in my young days of, of preaching, 14, 12, 11, 12, 14, when I started actually for the ministry and etc. And I would preach the stories of David and Goliath. You know, there was this young boy who was hearing cattle and sheep, and uh, he went to find Goliath and picked up five stones and uh, swung his thing and hit Goliath on the head and all that, and chopped off his head. And David killed it. His soul killed a thousand, ten thousand. David has killed tens of thousands. What does the church say? Amen. Amen. Wow. I look back now in my old age, I no longer see the sentiments of David fighting Goliath in the sentimental religious expression. I'm looking at that systems. So what are the Goliaths that we are facing as a nation? Can we fight this Goliath while we are putting on Saul's uniform? How do we challenge the system if we are dressed up and we are thinking like them? What are the stones? What are the resources that we need to fight this kind of a Goliath? And David says, but no man, I've killed bears, I've killed lions, and I cannot be insulted by this monster here. So what are the experiences we are coming from that must give us confidence enough to look at the system, which is now the Goliath, the economic system, the political system, the world, new world order system. We may look like we are small Goliath, the, the Davids, insignificant, but surely if we're able to conquer our battles of the past, we should be able to find some... So when you read these texts, for me, it, it, it is it's no longer just a religious story which mm -hmm. has a historical accuracy and then all these theologians want to sit around and argue so when was this text written who was what 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 was the environment and what is the historical no 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 just just forget it let's just take it as an allegory and let's pick up the values pick up the, the impetus pick up the marrow of the story and say in 2021 when i'm speaking to young boys and girls and i introduce them here is goliath <laughs> And you are this David. Mm -hmm. And now what is the strategy? So if you want to hit Goliath, don't hit him on the leg. He's too big. And try and find the spot. <laughs> and timing is everything. Mm -hmm. When Goliath removed his head to laugh at to laugh at David and say, You bring me this little fox. Am I a dog? And etc. And timing is everything. And he hit him on the head. So what is the head of the colonial system? Where's the governance? What is the politics? What is the economics? And until the African identifies where Goliath is the weakest, and time to hit it where it hurts, we'll never destroy the system. So for me, it's, it is no, it's no longer about standing up in church and saying, some, someone praise Jesus out there. And you are the real embodiment of the text you're trying to read. And until you can find yourself in the text as an expression of the text itself, then throw that book away. It doesn't help you. But if it must help you, you need to stand in those shoes with David. You need to understand what are your fears. You need to understand how your brothers are discouraging you. How do you live in the midst of conflict and discouragement? You need to understand how do you now face up and the whole tribe's welfare is on your shoulders. Take responsibility and face up your Goliaths and do what a man must do. So it's, for me, it, it not begins to speak to our political people, speak to our young people. Never undermine your stature, no matter how small you are. There is a huge amount of potential and capacity that has been given on your shoulders. If you can do what is humanly possible, surely the spiritual world will come into your rescue. But there's time for battle. So we can't be sitting around and praying that Goliath will disappear. We need someone who can walk up and Hit this Big demon, hit this Goliath, goal. drop yeah. this guy and chop off the head. And let us have a celebration after the death of Goliath. And that's a peaceful space of the national unity and sovereignty and indigenity and people finally living in the absence of abuse and insults. So the whole thing of 
touch people with weddings and rings and white dresses, the whole issue of making people drink things and, uh, you know, fumigating people around and condemning ancestral parents and graves. And this whole baggage of what, when people go to church, they think actually they're doing Jesus, they're doing God, you know, they're doing white culture. And this baggage for me is not important. What are the essence, issues of, of, of spirituality? Then I'll even take you to Jesus himself and say, okay, are you ready? For spirituality. Number one on one. I'll take you to the river. <laughs> I will put you in the river. And from the river, I want you to find some time of isolation. In the wilderness. Go and sit there. And while you are there, deal with the demons. Deal with the devil in that space. Deal with your fears. The things that have been inhibiting you. And fight with them. Conquer the world. Don't be bought or sold. I will give you the whole world if you bow down to me. Find your identity. What is it that you believe? So, so for me, if you can look into that space, oh, man, oh, 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 Baptist, what was it suggest? <laughs> in, in, in the, I'm saying so, in this space. So, was it said, God, was it said, and he was tempted. So you, you're not ready to stand in public if you have not been able to kneel in private. So you need to find time of isolation. Then you gather strength from there. Then you can begin to call for your own disciples. So for me, it's about leadership. Learn, after you've learned, teach others and create a legacy of commitment and truthfulness. And, and, and. So the, the whole thing of the Bible, it's, 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 I, think, I think, unfortunately, sorry to say this, it ended up in the hands of dull people. It ended up in the hands of little-minded people who used it to rather colonize people and, and, and forgot that the principles are bigger than a denomination. The principles are bigger than the universe itself. Do unto others what you want others to do unto you. That cuts across Muslims, India, China. I mean, it's a universal principle. That's karma. That's the law of reciprocity. Mm -hmm. Planting and harvesting. That's, so so some, if, you, if you get into the text and you forget the, the context and, and the intention of the text, you may end up remaining with the text and you have lost context. Therefore, it's a pretext. Hey. Every text without context is a pretext. <laughs> I, I, I don't think the, even those who call themselves Christians have understood what it means to be a, a Christian. And when I hear them say they want to be like Jesus, then I really look, I sit up straight. And then I want to find out, are you ready to, to be like Jesus? <laughs> If it means that you carry your cross, if it means that you carry your identity, if it means that you get crucified for what you believe. In. So for even the whole idea of the crucifixion of Jesus must not become such a religious sentiment. Then what? Are you, are you going to die for someone also? Or, or, or you are going to use that as a reference of strength to say, do you believe in anything that is worth believing in? As you rightfully said, that it is socialization. Churches create communities, support structures, burial societies, you know, children and friends, people get married, and so you have a support structure. So, and there's a greater percentage of people who are in churches, not for any spiritual purposes, but simply for the social support that it gives them. Especially yeah. in the urban areas. Yeah. People move away yeah. from their homes so, and they find themselves here. So basically, no scorny, no scorny, no smiley, no malume, uncle, and in case there's a funeral, then you can also have people that gather around to cry. So don't, don't get mixed up. If what you want is a, is a funeral cover, then go and buy a funeral cover. But you cannot use church as a funeral cover. And then you sacrifice your spiritual growth because you want a funeral support. You can rent out people to cry at your feet. Now, the, the other day, we're going to advert. Immediately, we can cry at 1,500. We can cry and break things at 1,200. <laughs> and we can cry and what? I, I, I love you. Someone should have seen it on the media there. But the Kunama levels. Yeah. yeah so, but you can rent the, 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 the mourners. Yeah. And, and, but at a more serious note, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that uh, the breakdown of the society the dilapidation of the African spiritual and cultural tapestry finds the African now vulnerable at a space of isolation mm -hmm. where you now begin to create this survival, of course, but this artificial support system around yourself that, 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 that is not truthful, but something just like a painkiller society which helps you just to cope, just to 
But we cannot just live to cope. We need to live in the full. I have come so that they may have life and have life even more abundantly. And, and, and I think with the, it, it is the lack of that abundance, the, the truthfulness of this freedom that we are supposed to have. And, and, and people want to live in meager, in meager spaces. Like the other day I was preaching on the story of um, the, the, the prodigal son. When he came back home, then the, the black book says the, the elder brother refused to get into the house. He says, I'm not going to eat with this boy of yours who was doing other things. And, and the accident the father said, but he, he, he took your things and he went and spent them in the riotous living. And, but me, your son who remained here at home, you never give me even a goat, a kid, to go and spend with my friends. And the father looks at him and says, but boy, why are you talking about the kid? Everything that I have belongs to you. And the term, sermon title was, why are we crying for goats when we own bulls? <laughs> like literally in a space of so much abundance, you worried about a goat. <laughs> you want to create a theology of goats <laughs> when actually we are having bulls. So when the Bible says be heads and don't be tails, what does it mean? Be there where the world politics is seen, where it is heard, it is spoken. It is thought. It is delivered. You can't be at the exit. No, where you're just receiving decisions. America talks about COVID and Corona. Well, then America talks about viruses. Then we're all running in there. Come on. Who, who amongst us has been there to sit in the world councils and planning? I heard the other day that Bill Gates is now projecting that 2025 a new a new virus is coming. I said, wow. So. I, I know a little bit of science. There's a telescope, there's a microscope, there's a speed camera. You can use a certain machine to see other things. So which machine is Bill Gates using, which looks into 2025 and, and see that there is another COVID variant that is coming in 2025? Now, and and you, are, you can see that. So maybe Bill Gates is a prophet. Maybe he's a prophet. But I don't know what machinery. Is it a physioscope? Is it a telescope? Is it a periscope? <laughs> but then we know that the other people will sit up there and they plan because they are at the head of where things are happening. The World Economic Forums, the, 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 the World Gut tra Trades on Tariffs Agreements, etc. The United Nations and, and the Davos, the Davos, where they are agreeing on call, cloning human beings and replacing human beings with machineries and computers and etc. And preserving human bodies for future uses and what. And these things are being discussed. Well, Elon Musk planning to disappear into the Mars and selling plots in Mars before you even get there. And so, there are people in this world who are sitting and thinking things. And then the Bible says, I want you to be heads and not tails. And still our ministers fail to interpret that passage to prepare their audience and their members to become heads and not tails. Those that need to hear this message, I speak once, they hear me twice. My journey turned when I was writing the book, Going Places in the Spirit, and then I started visiting the uh, knowledge systems Swaziland, I did some visits to Zebomnisi, went to Drakensberg, met up with Nabushabalala, we were running initiation schools, Pumalanga, did some stuff there, you know, Giani, Baleni, bushes there, fountains, sacred fountains, even ended up with Mkulukre, and, and, and learning and learning. And I said to myself, I'm not going to talk about them in my writing. I am going to talk with them to understand them. And then I moved my head of a pastor, then I put on the head of a scholar and an academician who when you get into a space, no prejudice, no understanding, no preconceived ideas, you go there and purely for the purposes yeah. of learning. So you get there with your degrees and you leave them in the dustbin at home and you sit around and you start learning. And I discovered I know nothing. I know nothing. Maybe I understand a few things, but I know nothing. There is a hell lot more out there than the myopic views that religion tries to square you in and fit you into this small little fish pond, like a small little koi fish. <laughs> You're always running around here and you'll never grow beyond the capacity of the container in which you have been put in. Now take that same koi fish and throw it in the swimming pool outside, see how big it grows. Now drop it into the sea. 
finally the full size of the koi fish matures because where there is limitation there is restriction but where there is freedom there is growth the entire religious space fails to ask to ask and answer one small question one small question if god wanted us in heaven then why did he put us on earth we need to, we need to define purpose of existence and life in the now on the here not hereafter on the here now is a big mission for god to kill us and then resurrect us and then move us to another space and then bring us back again and and so it it it, it, it you even f- forfeit the opportunity of experiencing the fullness of life while you are alive preparing for the afterlife and then you only to discover that maybe the intention of creation was not afterlife it was to give the human body a spiritual experience in the physical space and get into relationships get into tears get into experiencing life and nature and and, and then the, the real human soul as it were becomes mature enough when it transcends into the spiritual space it has learned lessons of function and practice and in a more understandable way again if i could use the bible this is the only time where we are now at a moments of transfiguration moments of exaltation where you you, you transform even the physical body to a, to a spiritual body and now moses appears next to jesus and elijah appears next to jesus in their spiritual forms and a conversation takes place there which we don't hear about but is it pos- possible that actually the human body at certain heights of understanding the spiritual beings <laughs> the spiritual reality that is present but invisible like abraham on the mountain side with the lamb that is next to him but he could not see it until his eyes were opened and there it was here all along before he could even kill his physical son so we need to get in and when you begin to look into the text where the, the the red seas are closed up but spiritually there could be an opening right in the midst of a, of a sea where rocks that have no food but water can be tapped and it can you know it's where, where the nature itself begins to multiply even the small loaves of bread in our hands and fish in our hands where impossible acts of walking on the water doing the impossible within the so the the, the, the bible for me becomes actually an, an, an esoteric kind of a text that tells you just one thing that the physical human body when well aligned when well trained it could actually transcend beyond physical to becoming a spiritual form we see this in the indian space where you trans you dance you trans under x-ray they've actually seen that there's like a mirage a certain amount of energy that begins to grow around the human body and the tense and the more the dance goes on the larger the 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 the, the, the aura goes then at the moment of of the height of that thing and they take a knife or they take a spear or a sharp needle they can poke it through your cheek to come out on the other side and on we must google this you must google this on x-ray the knife goes through if the knife is coming through it goes through the the aura and the energy and the energy bends to enter the flesh and separates human flesh to the other end and you hang all those things around the body but when you remove them at the end of the trance as the energy is going back the flesh closes and no wound no sore no scar remains now those are heights of spiritual frequency so even in endumbeni people don't understand all issue of ukita nanana and all this thing it's just, it's just pull, pulling out all the wrong energies and bad energies stomping the ground until the, the vibration of the body is in line with with the heartbeat of nature itself it's only at that level that maybe the spiritual person the the, the, the temperature which which might in the, in the koisang dance where they, they, they believe that the, the sun is now shining brighter and then visions and dreams and premonitions and instincts and intuition and you can listen to the conversations in the corridors of the spirit then it happens so even people who practice this even in the ngoma story next if they don't understand what they're doing 
we just end up as a ceremony we were just beating drums drinking some some beer and we we walk away and we say no, it's 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 it. Yeah. Uh, but the question is not what it's it. the question is did they did they go to school or school went through them you know it's, so it's, you can be present but absent so and then i think for me to to begin to look at this comparison and see the baptism of uh, a christian and the baptism of a twasa and all of them after this this one must have spiritual gifts of prophecy of evangelism of 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 and this one must have gifts of healing of prophecy of and you look around and actually the process is exactly the same it's, it's only that it's just being done in a different fashion while you're healing the other side this one's a healing on the other end so in my world maybe the lines are getting thinner and what separates us is far much less than what unites us to us actually that is so true uh, we are not only us but also the spirituality mm. that we purport to uh, to to live mm. I mean, how do you explain? How do you explain the upper room? And then they started to sing, and they were praying together, sharing together in the upper room, and they were in one spirit, they were in one accord, and the spirit of the Lord, like flames of fire, came upon all of them, and there, in the energy, and all started to transit. And th the tongues they are beautiful because the way it is done. Those from Cappadocia, those from Egypt those from Sudan and Cyrene, those from Ethiopia, all of them had the disciples speak in their own native language. Come on. You didn't hear that part. So it was not but the Ethiopian who was sitting there heard the persons speak to them. So you reach a, a spiritual level where you are now able to minister to different people. You might not be of the same ethnic group for me, but now that you've become a spiritual healer, even a person who has no language connection with you, a person who has no ethnic connection with you, quote They're unquote. When you get into the spiritual language, they will understand you. They will understand you. So I can take my glass of water before I drink it and I will pour it to the ground. Even the Hindi, the Indian, and the, what the Moscow men who can speak, they can see something spiritual is happening. What, what does this mean? What is he doing? What is that? Because the language of the spirit transcends. The, the, transcends everything else that separates us. So, the and drug, I, bring it back to the drug. Oh. Everybody Ingo! Ngenga isho nge nyimi drapa wasa klaka wasa klaka na wafundis wa mngiti haba kuli bong izango uma hivungo uma lovia ingo uma lovungo uma it's all about healing using song and ingo uma in shona ngo uma is a drum and the drum is an old oxen or an old cow that died and an old tree which is hallowed mm -hmm. and then you put the two together and then when you hit it on top there in the hollowness of the tree and remember the connection of human beings with trees in terms of breathing and air and the experiences of the past are able to be translated into quantum physics into science of sound that now resonates with those that are living as we are listening to the conversations of the old. So for me, a drum becomes a meeting place of the community where spirituality starts. We can't talk spirituality before we hear the sound of the drum. Before you hear the sound of the drum. Because we meet right there in the sound and there's no spectator. We are either dancing, we are clapping hands, we are hitting the drum, we are singing together. There's no the participant. There's no listening. There's no listener. All of us participating. participate. Everybody together. is being moved. We're smelling the same dust together and we we hear the, the, where we are coming from. And something happens. Something happens. Maybe we need more of these ceremonies where communities must just come together and, and hit some drums together. Hit some, and the block of all other noises. And we, our, our minds are brought into one space where we are hearing the same thing. We, we actually, come on. So imagine that happening in a church building because those are the spaces where people get together. We don't have that because we no longer have a, uh, okay, maybe some people do, but a lot more people do not because people are moved to the urban spaces and this is where people are living. And the gatherings about spirit only happen in the churches. So imagine the church facilitating those the, yes, those spaces and bringing the language <laughs> of spirit into <laughs> the space. <laughs> 
engezwa i drum ele sinto inje la baleka ngayo ngozi aphume nge fast years ele inkonzo zawo lezi zizi inkonzo lezi these mainstream churches if you should bring a drum into those church and you hit it they believe you are evoking other things so christianity seems to be scared the language they're scared of spirit of the spirit but yet they believe in the holy spirit and then you wonder what spirit is it, it only comes when it hears the organ and the strings no oh, the spirit of the lord is here you know da, 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 and then people get into this euphoria of you know of hope <laughs> of a better world like you said and yet, there. and yet when you come to the african space where it is the drum and they think that it evokes other things maybe it's a very thing that you are afraid of that you are evoking but it's only through a different space this is plastic Another this is recited thing. this is memorized this is real <laughs> that's that's why i want to take it because that's another thing in the african space you are taught on how you can manipulate energy mm-hmm. and how you can manipulate the things that you have around you and a lot of the time it's natural objects and natural elements or the things are made of natural elements we are taught how to manipulate energy to evoke spirit to change your circumstances which is what we call alchemy but in the church in the jesus space you are just told to receive and you are not manipulating you're not changing so you're not controlling the space the space is being controlled for you and you are receiving mm-hmm. but in the african space you are exerting yourself and, and you're maybe, bringing what you want into the maybe, space that's why maybe even some of these guys don't they will never understand the africans and i don't i don't say that in a derogative way because we are not a subject for study we are a subject of experience you will not understand why the liberation of south africa happens in song why when people are frustrated then they dance and they toy toy around the space and etc what are they doing exactly what what are they doing militants of the old days when soldiers are trained to go for war or peter mahaul up in there hitting their shields and etc and psyching themselves to get into battle what is happening there exactly so you you you, you harvesting you harvesting energy you harvesting you know power you you're moving into a different space you are putting aside the conscious mind and you're tapping into the subconscious mind your, your ethical and moral obligations you sub, subtract the value of your life to the mission that must be done and etc and in a correct psyching form when those soldiers are coming from there look at the new zealanders when they do their haka before they get into the rugby match you know yeah good you can go again the by the time they're coming from there these are warriors who are ready for war mm-hmm. so maybe the whole religious space must not just become too docile which forces people into submissiveness but, but then we need to to inculcate the the militancy of the gospel the whole bible is war the whole old testament it's war It's men taking land, cattle, and, and, and fighting for what rightfully belongs to them. And how Christianity has ignored all that and only talk about the God of love. Put on the Bible, introduces us to the God of war. Maybe the military man in me, that's where he wants to stand up and say, where is the God of war when Africa is going through so much and we need some men, some women, some zingas, to stand up some navetities to stand up and and, and 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 lead this nation towards the battle fronts rather than leading leading us to, to altars of confession and, and and praying and bowing down and being slain in the spirit and people are rolling on the floor playing soccer in churches and people call this church even hiring comedians to come and share some jokes and humor around the church and people are just going there for some drugs or feel good space and we miss the battle lines so and, and i think it's important that we balance both the sentiments of a the sentimental worship service and the militants of the era and period at which we are living